If you can do it, it's not arrogance. Like I, I'm a big proponent of like, if, if what you're saying is a fact, mm -hmm. it is not arrogance, mm -hmm. it is confidence. How you doing, my brother? Shit, I'm good, boss. You good? Yeah, let's do this. Appreciate you uh, joining us. Um, real quick, just go ahead and go over what you've been feeling, what you want to work on, and how you think we can uh, get you more prepared for Thursday. Um, I mean, I always am a big part of the lower body because, you know, you know I don't like to lift upper body. So, <laughs> calves a little tight, feet a little tight, and... Uh, Patel tennis is standard for basketball, right? Okay. Cool, cool. Uh, just do us a favor real quick and stand up. Let's go through a couple movement tests just to have a baseline of where we started and where we could go. Hands on table, facing this way. Oh, got it. Hands on table, and then heels Super. elevated. Yep, driving the knees forward. Okay. And again, we're just filling out our range. Also sensation. Uh -huh. I mean, the range looks really good, but Remember the sensation pretty definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I feel it. A lot better than uh, a couple days ago, though. Clearly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like, from there, you can just do a body weight squat and then feel that sensation as well. Okay. On table, not on table. Uh, you can you can use it for slight balance aid. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty good depth. Squat feels good. Squat feels good. Yeah. Okay. What about a split squat? Right. Just your traditional. Yep. Body yeah. weight, back loaded split squat. Remember that sensation, switch sides. Any bio, uh, unilateral difference or bilateral difference? a little difference? more so on the left. More so on the left? Yeah, okay. non-surgery. Non non-surgery side, okay. All right, cool. So I'm going to make my most valiant attempt in making your knees feel better. <laughs> and at, in the process, we're going to go over just, you know, it's playoff time. It's playoff season, yeah. very special season. So, you know, we're just going to kind of talk about that and, 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 and things of that nature. Perfect. Um, so we'll start with you've been to the playoffs how many times? Uh, three. Four, well, three that I played in. Three that you played in. Yeah, Can you four, let yeah. the audience know those instances and what teams you were on at that point? Uh, Detroit, Brooklyn, um, and obviously Dallas. Trump. I don't know why I blanked out on, on Dallas. Because uh, <laughs> you're in it? Yeah, exactly. One of the uh, Brooklyn's, I didn't obviously play much in the Detroit season, but I was more a witness to it, was in the practices, all the other stuff to lead up. So I was in the playoff experience. Um, one of my Brooklyn years, obviously, um, I definitely played in that um, environment when we played Philly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. And how we, deep did you guys? No, nah, we were just in the first round. First round. So what we seed were you guys that year? Ooh, Do you remember? were we seven, maybe? Seven. Something like that. Who'd y'all play? Uh, Philly. Philly, you just Yeah, we, yeah we lost 4-1. Right. Uh, we actually won the first game. Wow. And then, in Philly? In Philly. I punched them in the mouth. And then uh, we had a couple of chances at, I think it was game three and four. Um, they, they definitely beat us game two and obviously uh, game five as well. But games three and four, we had our chances. Um, then obviously another Brooklyn year, I was a part of a playoff team, but I was hurt, so it doesn't really count. I was away in LA rehabbing with gotcha. you, actually. You were rehabbing who? With you. Oh, yeah. yeah. One time for the one time. There um, it is. Let's go back to, uh, real quick, just the experience of that first playoff series. You know, your first opportunity to, A, lead your team to the yeah. playoffs, yeah. right? We kind of spoke about that earlier yeah. today. And B... Be in that moment, be in the environment, be the guy. Yeah. Uh, and then I, you know, I didn't know you back then, so I didn't really pay attention. But yeah. did not know that you beat them game one. Yeah. Uh, you know, reflect on that. Reflect. Yeah. Reflect on the moment. Reflect on you know being in the playoffs your first year. Yeah. So. I think so that's, uh, really interesting. So uh, the the team that I like led like led led mostly solo ish, you know what I'm saying? Obviously credit to my teammates. Yeah. Uh but no like star type guy. Right. Um was actually the bubble year. So we were like a six seed. I played all the first sixty five games. I ended up not going to the bubble because I caught COVID like 
a week before the bubble and oh yeah it was in new york in an apartment for like 18 straight days or whatever it was so it hit you hard yeah it hit me pretty hard i had covid when people thought you were gonna die but like right like, like, like not early. a game like early i'm talking <laughs> i'm talking june what is that 2020 damn right? yeah like i had it right there people thought so wait I, like let's really talk about that real quick because i this is new information to me yeah like did you lose your sense of taste? Did you lose your smell? No, so I just, I just Did had. Did you the, feel like you were gonna die? The fevers, the chills, the muscle aches. I had, I had all that, like a really, really bad flu type thing. I didn't um, lose my sense of taste, thank God, because I was just in an apartment eating, uh, so I could still taste my food. I was, I was, I was fortunate enough for that one. But for now, like I was sweating through the sheets and like mm. all, all of it. Like I had, I had the OG like real deal COVID. Right. Where like people were legit scared. Like the like, monster oh, COVID. Yeah. Like, like the top shelf COVID. Yeah, it was real. Like it, <laughs> it was it was real deal Holyfield. Uh and but, you were by yourself, so like Oh yeah. That nah, was probably also psychological. Family was not with me, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Parents in LA, all that stuff. Like, you know, it was just me in a one bedroom New York apartment. And the other thing too is remember, at that time, because obviously we're in the NBA. When you catch it and they kind of put it on the news, now everybody looking at me like I got the plague. Right. So they're like, like you're an alien. Like what? Like he's in the apartment. Like what's going on? <laughs> blah blah. Like there is no like privacy or secrecy. So I'm just hold up in an apartment. Nobody wants to see me, talk to me, nothing. I'm just like I'm just I'm in the trenches. Slew of yeah, I'm mental in the trenches issues, with man. it. Like dang. Uh, but the but the team that we played Philly, um, you know, I say like that was that was D'Lo's team and. You know, me and him kind of co-led that one. Mm -hmm. He was super dynamic that year, made an all-star team. Mm -hmm. um, game one, punch in the mouth. I mean, shit, we came out, we were rolling. You kind of just young kids that didn't know no better. I mean, right. at the time, yeah, I mean, shoot, I was probably 24, 25. Like, you know, you think about it, and it's not that far from 29, but, like, right. in NBA years, man, I was a child. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And if I was 24, 25, then D'Lo had to be, you know, 22, maybe. Seriously. Even younger than that. So, and then obviously you have like Karis, who is probably 23. You know, you had um, Jared Allen, who had to be 19. Like, he was either a rookie or in his second year or That's something crazy. like that. Like, That's crazy. you know, we were, we were all children. Right. You know what I mean? Like, um, Which probably played into your favor because you guys were almost like in, ignorance is bliss type thing. Like yeah. You didn't know about the moment. You're just out there nah, having a good time, we just, rolling, we, we rocking. Out there, we out there thinking, look, like we we not the, supposed to be here. Exactly. The mentality was, look, we're all supposed to be all stars one day. You know what I'm saying? Like, why can't we go beat them? Right. You know. So who was on that Philly team? Uh, Mind me. That was JJ Redick, Tobias. I think that was Jimmy. Jimmy? Yeah, Ben, Joel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jimmy was on that one. That's a formidable team right yeah, there. Yeah, no, they, they, <laughs> they weren't no punks at all. That's why I said I think they were two and we were seven. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So you think maybe y'all probably caught them by surprise? Kind yeah, of, I think so. Because they probably were like, ah, oh, these kids. Yeah, for sure. We're going to run right through them. I think so. Pause. But... No, I think I think that's that's part of what it was, especially being older now. You know what I'm saying? Being 29, like understanding how vets approach the game, how they probably looked at our team. Sure. Like yeah, they're talented, but they'll they'll mess up. Right. You know what I'm saying? They'll find a way to lose, like right. things like things of that nature. Right. Um, but you know we were explosive enough to mm -hmm. to win that, especially with Karis coming back later in the year. We had you know three guys that could really go get it. Um, but yeah, no, nah, like that was it was also a very fun team too. We had right. Jared Dudley, you know, Ronnie Hollis Jefferson. We just had like great personalities in that sure. in that locker room and on that experience. And what you realize, you know, reconnecting with some of those guys like Jared Dudley and Theo Pinson on on Dallas, like that really does matter. You know, like because yeah. those those environments, those locker rooms, that camaraderie is what gets you through tough times. I mean, yep. you know, when we lost game one, for example, like there was no flinch. Uh, and I'm talking about the Dallas experience now. There was no flinch. Even most with, recently. Yeah, most recently, even with Luca out. So, you know, we were just like, hey, look, we're going to do it. Theo's making guys laugh in the locker room still. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, there was there was nobody like, oh, man, here it goes. Like, our star is out. Like, right. it's going to be bad. We're just no like, panic nah, like, button, no none of nah, that. No, we got it. Let's do it. I remember vividly... Uh, 
us talking after the game and you're like, oh, we got him. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to speak prematurely, but you felt really good about it, even though yeah. the loss Yeah, I mean, was I think it was going to debut yeah. after, yeah. after uh, the series and whatnot. But, yeah. I mean, we, we sat in the sauna pre-game one. I kind of told you exactly how game one would go. And, you know, if I hit my free throws in that game, then we win that one. And, honestly, the series is over right now as we speak. So, mm -hmm. you know. Sure. That would be the game I would regret, obviously. Um, but just the free throw aspect. Just the free of it. throw aspect of it, because you know if you tie that game in, and like I said, it's a, it's a four-one. If if not, possibly a sweep, because sure. game two we had under control. Uh, yes. Game three, we also had under control. Um, and game four, we gave away. Literally. Like literally. Found a way to lose. Yeah, like found a way to lose. And that's what them having forty free throws like. And in game five, we went by 30. Now, let's talk about that real quick. You don't got to get too political, but 40 free throws to, I believe, 19. 19. I think can, it was can you give us a little bit of just insight on how that doesn't make any sense, but it does to the NBA? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, so essentially, man. And again, you know, the, you know we of don't course, of course, we'll of edit what we need to. But yeah. <laughs> No, nah, I mean, it's like this, man. You know on their home court, game four, they already down 2-1 to a starless Dallas Mavericks team. You know, stars coming back. They're going to come out hyper aggressive. They're going to be, you know, complaining and talking about how they were sliding the series and try to use home court advantage to their benefit. Now, do I think they were so much more aggressive on the offensive end and so much more technically sound than us on the defensive end to have 42 to our 19 for Right. Of of course not. Right. That like that that speaks to like, you know, the 2016 Warriors versus, you know, the, the 2022 Rockets. You know what I mean? Like Facts. it would be that type of talent disparity that you would you have would that type there, of, right? right? Not right. a four or five seed game. But right. you know, things happen and you learn from it. The I think the more indicting thing, like I told you, with both games one and four, right? Like game one, I hit my free throws, we win. And that's no star or whatever first game. They're supposed to be fresh and all that other stuff. And in game four, you have 40 free throws and win by one. One. You know what I'm saying? By like, which, still had opportunities to win that game. Still had opportunities to win it. Like, like it's, when you look at the, the tide of this series, it didn't bode well. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Not saying Utah's not capable because they're talented. They got sure. two max guys, all sure. that stuff. They're, they're a five seed. They fought. And earned, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. everything they've gotten. But just looking at style, looking at matchup, and looking at the tide of the entire series, like you would think 42 free throws at 19, like that team's up 15 at least. At least. At right. least. Right. Um, so we have migrated seamlessly into present, present day and, you know, what's going on currently um, in your life. Yeah. I, I, I kind of wanted to shed a little light on you know this moment this 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 beautiful moment of being able to play at the highest level of basketball in the entire universe yeah it's not the nba but it's the nba playoffs yeah. let's just talk let's just break that open real quick what the diff the main difference to you is between regular season basketball in the nba and playoff basketball in the nba i think uh everybody plays hard so there's no like random. So you're saying that some people don't play hard during the regular season. I think that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you can't afford to play a gotcha. hundred percent. Like think about it, like with a car, right? If you redline every single day when you're driving to work, the car probably breaks a lot quicker. For sure. You know, what I mean, there's got to be some wiggle room. There's got to be something, and that's why you sometimes see those random Tuesday nights where, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks who are like. You know what I'm saying? World beaters go into Sacramento and get beat by 20. Sure. They just don't have it. Sure. It might be a back-to-back. -back. Sure. It's a Tuesday. They they haven't seen they're on a 10-day road trip, haven't seen their family in however long. Like they're just they're they're shot. You know what I'm saying? Not just physically, but mentally. You know, and, and in those scenarios, like sometimes you, you end up giving a game away, even though talent-wise you're a better team. Yeah. In the playoffs, everybody's locked in, everybody's on 10, everybody's playing hard. Mm. So now you start to see some of the talent gaps right and then also depending upon what your role is you're getting guarded by number one number twos whatever it is you're not getting nights off because you know the same way you're locked in and getting ready to go score 
that that primary defender is locked in, getting ready to stop, stop you. So you. you know the the Kawhi Leonard's of the world or the Drew Holiday's of the world, right? Like it's not a random Tuesday for them. They've been watching film for a full week on ten season. What you're gonna do if you take two dribbles to the right, or if you take, you know, you shift your body this way or whatever. Like yeah. now you're picking up on everything because you're not game planning for three teams in a week. Right. You're game planning for one team over three weeks. You know what I mean? So just a just completely different pitch. Um, and I think that's why, uh, you know, you start to see some uh, uh, the separation, like guys that can still be them, um, affect plays, like get in the paint, still, you know, get their guys shots, make shots, whatever that may be, right. whatever their skill set and talent is, um, shows you who's, you know, truly unstoppable. We talk about this all the time, right? Like, like I feel like my gift is being able to get into the paint, right? And, At and, will. And make a play. And so when you're in the playoffs and you're guarded by their best player or their best defender, sorry, and you're still in the paint every single play, mm -hmm. that means like, hey, like my fastball, my best pitch is still better than whatever your best defense or best pitch is back. So, right. you know, it, it you, you got to, your trump card got to be able to beat their trump card. Is the, uh, is, is the, the mental reaction to the game different for you in terms of like, anxiety or nerves or like like does it feel different like, uh yeah the, feel, en the energy's different yeah, energy's different for more sure. emotion for sure like, there, there's more there's more emotion and there's more uh energy within the game and i think it there's actually less outside of the game because there's constant adjustment so true. you know even if you were to hit a game winning shot in game one it don't matter because you can still lose the series you know what right. i'm saying so it's not like game-winning shots that you may hit in the regular season where now you're flying back to Dallas, you're flying to your next city, and you kind of get to relish in that moment mm -hmm. because uh, we won't see them again for a month or we won't see them again for two months or whatever. Like, nah, like, we're seeing them again in three days. So game-winning shot is cool. Right. Winning by 20 is cool, but they could come back and beat you by 20. Like, so it, it's really about playing the totality of the series. So I would say the emotions and the energy within the game are mm -hmm. higher, like, you know, the fans are going crazier. Every shot means more. But then outside a game, like after a win or a loss, you're just like, all right, cool. But what's the next game plan? How are we adjusting? That's such a good point. How, how do you do that? Like, I'm sure everyone's different. But how do you personally, Spencer Dinwiddie, like flush it? Well, I had I a great game. I got to flush it. I had a bad game. I got to flush like it. I got, you know what I mean? Wh whatever it is, like flush it. I yeah. got to get ready for the next one. It's almost like a quarter for a regular game. You have a bad first quarter, all right, cool, we coming back second quarter, like we gonna make it happen, whatever, like, oh, bad half, all right, cool, but we still got winning time, third, fourth quarter, let's go get it. And so I view a series almost in that manner, right? And mm. It's now every game That's is beautiful. a quarter, Love that. you know, versus it being like the game is the game, not the game's a quarter. Like, hey, if I had a bad game one, that's just nothing but the first quarter. Mm -hmm. We go back and we get it, you know what I'm saying? Do you step outside of routines? So. You have your regular season routine, uh, pregame routine, what you do on that day, what you do probably after the game. Do you have that same thing in the playoff, or do you, does it like kind of does it adjust to the day? Does it adjust per week? Like, how, what do you um, do? What do you do to kind of maintain equilibrium? You feel so me? So I, I I do the same routine. Now I get more treatment. You know what I'm saying now, um, right. just based on how my body feels, but. You know, my treatment schedule in general is more so uh, um, not play it by ear because that sounds way too loose. Like we have base level treatment stuff that we do, but more or less depending upon how the body feels. Like you're always trying to have that litmus test and mm -hmm. not do too much, not do too little, right? Right. Um, and just with the playoffs and the intensity of the games, you end up getting more treatment naturally. But in terms of like the game day routine and do I still get the same nap? Do I still yeah. eat the same foods? Like. Yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm notorious for my smoothies. I'm gonna get the same nap. I'm a I approach the game like any other game because at the end of the day, I feel like when I when I put my trump card down, like it's it's up there with the best of them. Talk to us about the notorious smoothie routine because I think this is also very interesting and it's really important for young hoopers to understand and know like game day nutrition matters. Yeah, like so much. So yeah. please go into <laughs> that just to help these young up and comers coming out thinking that they can eat and drink whatever they want, but really yeah. it, it, there's nah, so it much. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Um, you know, and, and, and obviously 
people would do what they're used to and what they're comfortable with. So, you know, they've getting, been getting by McDonald's. They're going to keep doing it because that's what they know. But obviously, there's a whole other world they can go to. Um, for me. What do you mean on a whole other world they can go to? Just in terms of the, the body is a machine. And, and obviously, everybody is different. But there are pretty standard elements to Thank the you. body, right? Oxidative stress, things of that nature. Like, so, <laughs> you know. I was somebody that when I got hurt the first time I started, this is back in college, started looking at ways I could be 1% better. Um, you know, diet being one of them, because when I was in college, I ate McDonald's like everybody else, like, who don't? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, ain't nobody had no no money like that. Like, you, you, you eat what you mm -hmm. can and, and, yeah. and what you like, and, and you make it salty work. fast food is, yeah. tastes good, man. It is what it is. <laughs> but, um, no, so as I got into the league, started eating more fruits, vegetables, things of that nature. Um, and one of the easiest ways for me to get large amounts of fruits was through smoothies. And I already kind of naturally like smoothies. And um, now today, what I'm notorious for is like my blueberry smoothies. I love blueberry smoothies. I know they're high in antioxidants, like really good for you. And so every game day, I, eat, I drink probably about like 72 ounces of like blueberry smoothie. And blended yeah, fruits. Blended fruits. And, you know, we switch with other fruits sometimes. Strawberries, pineapples, mangoes, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it may be, whatever I can get my hands on, maybe add some cinnamon in there, maybe a little honey. Mm -hmm. um, I don't do dairy, so, you know, almond milk or coconut milk. Um, you know, you can add in some orange juice or whatever if you need to thin it out. Like, there's a bunch of granola, like, a bunch of different things you can, right. like, do that, that are part of the mix. But for the most part, you're going to have a heavy dose of blueberry, and it's going to be about 72 ounces in it. It also kind of doubles as my hydration, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, as you use the bathroom... Um, you'll notice the, uh, <laughs> the the clarity of your uh, excretion. The system. <laughs> yeah, the, the system. <laughs> and and how do you feel? I feel great. I feel yeah. loose, feel light. That's feel, the point. Yeah. feel bouncy and all that stuff. So, yeah. you know, I realized that it worked for me and that I felt good in doing it. Yeah. Um, and so it's something that I've definitely kept in the routine. Sure. And I'm not, pro I'm not a proponent of saying everyone should have the smoothie regimen. But what I am saying is, is find what makes you feel amazing yeah. and do that. And exactly. For sure, fast food is not going to be yeah. that answer. Yeah. I don't care who you are. A Five Guys Burger is probably not it's the. It's not going to be. It's, and yeah. it does matter. Yeah. You know, whether it's today or next year, it matters. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's the thing, too. Like, I think that was part of what getting hurt made me realize my own mortality. And mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that I could walk and play with my son. At the end of the day, I didn't want to be one of those guys that you know, couldn't really move around when he was done. So that was the inspiration for me, even more so than just the basketball. Like obviously, of course, basketball, like we want to maximize that. But it was like, man, I did not want to be one of those guys sure. that, you know, his son was saying, hey, let's go play catch. And I'm limping to the to the front yard. You know what I mean? Like that, I I, I would feel like I did such a disservice to, you know, my life experience because we only got one of these if that's how, I was moving around, so right. You know, I so you're to, saying it's not just about basketball. Not solely. I mean, <laughs> for the, the there's a there's a big piece there. Don't get me wrong, because if basketball wasn't in play, I probably wouldn't be drinking 72, 72 <laughs> ounces of smoothie. Maybe, you know, right. sixteen or twenty four. Right, but right. but yeah, like in general, like you know, I I, I definitely want to be able to be able, willing, and present for my son and hopefully future kids yeah for sure absolutely one of the things that i wanted to have you shed light on is you know the playoffs are this amazing experience that you get to share with your teammates your coaches yourself your family your yeah. friends like it's a very beautiful moment like you know me being in the nba i've had one other experience in the playoffs with the pelicans yeah you and that other one yeah uh, I was not present with Drew's run to the championship, unfortunately, but that's just how limited I've been exposed to this amazingness. Yeah. But what I would like for you to shed light on is kind of explain to us like your why behind um, why making it to this position in your career is so amazing and so important to you. Yeah. Is, it to, is it to prove the, the, the naysayers wrong? Is it to prove the haters wrong? Is it to, you know what I'm saying? Is it to get the ring? Is it to get the bonuses? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just kind of yeah. shed light on like why it's so important to you to be here and, and to be, and be successful. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that I found most peace in using as a driver 
was not even so much the hate or the doubt or whatever because I've had that my entire career. Like, I was never ranked higher than any of that. It was proving, like, me right. It was proving the mm. the four-year-old, the five-year-old, that guy, that guy right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thinking about, like, if I were to have a dream and to, you know, go back in time and talk to him, like, <laughs> would I say, like, hey, like, don't worry, you did it. Like, you're going to be proud of the man you become, that type of thing. So yeah. it was more about that, I think, now. I think when I was younger, it probably had a lot to do with that, that fire, that hate, that that chip, that that pissed off nature. But there's a lot more peace, and that probably has a lot to do with having my own son. Sure. Um, so there's a legacy piece there. Legacy piece there, and then <clears throat> also I think when you're in the NBA and you understand how it works, you know that there's certain aspects that are going to be very hard to attain just because of the entertainment industry part of it yeah. right yeah and so your goals change uh when you understand some of that you know when i when i was young like when i was four five stuff like that like i told myself i'd be a 20 point a game score in the nba i told myself i'd make an all-star team i told myself i'd win a championship sure um i think the all-star thing is less of a driver and goal now because i understand it's a popularity contest Right. Because by metrics wise, like I should have made the All Star team in 2019, 2020. You know what I mean? Like Kyrie was hurt, Karras was hurt. I was 21 and seven and led a team where, you know, this is pre Jared Allen All Star. You know, we got Joe Harris, we got Garrett Temple, Torian Prince, Theo Pinson, Zanin Musa, Rodion's Karooks, and DeAndre Jordan, and we a six seed. Like if you all due respect, no, 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 those but, are my guys. But but but, you, but but there had to be a driver who, there. Like who? There had to be a driver there. Honestly, like me, yeah. keeping it real, like I know DeAndre Jordan, obviously, but who? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So, like, when you look at the team, like, and like I said, those are my guys, and they all played their role to a to a certain level that allowed us to be a 60 because sure. nobody succeeds in basketball by themselves. But you needed a driver for that for that constructed team. Of course. You needed a driver. And if that constructed team was in the playoffs, if Chris Paul takes that team to the playoffs or, oh yeah, you know, Devin Booker or whoever else because Phoenix Suns are playing right now, so <laughs> that's why they're, like, easy to call upon. Like, oh, they're making an all-star team for sure. Like, because if you're a 60, you're a playoff team, like, there's at least an all-star on that team. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just yeah. the way this thing works. That's like, just the way it works. So, but for us, because, you know, KD was hurt, Kyrie was hurt, you know, even Karras, who has probably a little bit sexier name than I do, was hurt. It was like, ah, oh, well, you know. We're going to put whoever else, or we'll give Philly four all-stars, or, you know what I'm saying, something like that, which you understand it. So that's less of a goal for me now than um, sure. it ever was. So, you know, and then averaging 20 points a game, you know, being able to tell my five-year-old self I did that, mm -hmm. and now, you know, wanting to win a championship and being on a team that has, you know, that type of potential, um, you know, that that's pretty much the, the last thing for me is to, squeeze the most I can out of the lemon and that's why we work hard that's why we you know do what we do and, and that's win fine. a championship like that's it you know I've, I've also been fortunate to you know probably when it's I mean when it's all said and done I'll definitely top 100 million in career earnings but right now you know I came off a three for 30 and signed a three for 60 and have a bunch of minimums so you know I'm in the got to be in the 80 90 range for sure you know contract earnings already like mm -hmm. and you know God willing, I sign another deal. Like I'll top 100 million in contractual earnings. Which, you know, if you told anybody that knew me in eighth grade or ninth grade or tenth grade or whatever, Max. like they'd have been like, "What the hell? Like you're tripping? Like little? Like I'm gonna earn 100 million? Yeah, you know. Boy, stop. <laughs> <That's what I'm> saying. <laughs> go sit like, down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They just been like, bro, like go sit down somewhere. So, you know, there's there's a there's a lot there, and and you know, people probably in the day to day or whatever don't. Realize when you zoom out, you look at the entirety of the journey. Like it's a lot to be blessed about. Like, yeah. you know, even if, even if someone was like, "Hey, would you trade your two ACLs to have this type of career and, you know, hunt them in and validate yourself to to yourself?" Right? Like a lot of people aren't gonna bring up like my 1920 season, like in the history books, or whatever. Like blah, blah. But for me, second round pick, ACL tear, boom, almost out the league, D league, all this, all that other stuff, mm -hmm. and then be like, "Hey, kid, don't worry." That twenty point a game goal you had, you're gonna do it. Yep. You're gonna lead them to the playoffs. You're gonna you're gonna show yourself 
that all that wild stuff that you used to tell yourself in the mirror and talk right. that everybody thought was arrogance, that was confidence because, like I said, if you can do it, it's not arrogance. Like I, I'm a big proponent of like if if what you're saying is a fact, mm -hmm. it is not arrogance. Mm -hmm. It is confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, if you sound like you just blowing smoke, it's arrogance. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. And you did everything. It is. You just got a championship to get. That's it. All right, let's uh, go ahead and retest. Pop up, let's see if we got any difference. Perfect. <clears throat> Mainly looking at that left side. The left because, side yep, worked on. Yep. Oh, yeah. A little bit better there. For sure. Beautiful. For sure. I think you can see it, too. Mm -hmm. Just the ease. Yeah. Good money. Perfect. Beautiful. My well, man, as always. GBG Gems. Yeah, I know. Table time. There it is. Oh, yeah.